let's start with Beef Larson. How to stop inmates from attempting to manipulate you and extort you. Now there's three phases and I got a great video. I have a green shirt on, got a good one inch uh, thicker mohawk, thicker goatee on purpose just for that class and I pointed out, you know, your appearance can make an effect on how they try and manipulate you or not and how you explain it. But watch that and that's a good foundation of manipulation. Sorry, my allergy is getting me. Three phases of manipulation. They're attempting to manipulate you. Number two is when they succeed and you're on their payroll. You're doing stuff and they're paying you. The third stage of manipulation is when you get caught. Click, click, handcuffs. You get the picture, handcuffs. So I'm focusing on one. I don't want you to get to number two where you're doing it and getting paid and number three arrested and doing mandatory time. Phase one. I told you on my first day, somebody tried me physically, had a use of force report. About an hour after that's done, I go to the other side. This happened in C1, dorm C1. In dorm C2, somebody of the same gang, hey old timer, I was 48 when I started the prison. I said, I'm not an old timer, I'm young. I'll give you a thousand dollars for an iPhone. No, walked away. A little bit later, same thing. Remember, thousand dollars for iPhone. I said, I told you no, don't ask me again. Very direct with them, looking them in the eye, no. A little bit later, come by, asked me a third time. And I said, how about I break your neck? Ask me that question again. Now we're busy. I was stuck in this dorm by myself. And should I have said that? Eh, maybe yes. How you present yourself to them, how you say them. But I'm retired police. I know how they talk and they act. I know how they disrespect and don't care. They meaning inmates. I could have wrote them up a little piece of paper, but people were busy. Nobody could come down and show me how to how to write them up on my first day. So I just gave them an expression. My second day, different building, different dorm, same gang. Hey, old timer, I said, I'm not old. I said, I got no problem hitting and kicking and getting to the floor. And I'm looking at him like this. He said, how about you bring me in a cell phone? I said, I told your buddy yesterday, how about I break your neck? You know, I went about a week or two before they asked me that question again. They had to figure me out. Somebody in a different gang tested me. They lost. As you can tell, I'm spirited, is a good word for it. Ambitious, got some experience. How do you stop this? No. Now the viewer that requested this video, I know they say no, but here's some things that can help reaffirm the verbal no. Your appearance. When I told you I grew a longer mohawk and, and goatee to teach manipulation class for a reason. Watch it. Folks, you go to the gym, you exercise, you work out, you go up and talk to people. You notice in my videos when I'm talking, my hands are like this. And I had a viewer ask me, but he commented on YouTube and he said, are you just trying to flex in your videos? I made a video about officer presence, watch that. But this is what I'm talking about. You know how I do my hands like this and stuff all the time? The inmates watch when you're discussing things with them. When they ask you about bringing something in and you're always going like this, sometimes I turn to the side on purpose and I'm going like this, I'm letting them know. Remember Hulk Hogan and 24 inch pythons? I want them to think this python's gonna wrap around their neck if they keep asking me that question. Now I don't explain it to them that way. I'm just letting them know because most of the inmates in there their arms are about this big around. Mine's not. You see what I'm getting at? You tell them, no, walk away. No, walk away. They want to try and extort you and say something? Well, let me tell you this. You keep telling them no, you let your sergeant and your shift commander, your lieutenant know, corporal know, whatever ranking is above you. Let them know. Write it down in your notebook. you got to have a notebook. The inmate's name, date and time are doing this. You start writing them the tickets. You start writing them grievances whatever, disciplinary reports, whatever you call it, start writing them up. Write them up. Get some paper flow going. That's what you need to help. You're telling them no, you got some paper flow going. Give them some officer presence. Show them firm, fair, and consistent. Those words are very important. Document this. Now, them asking you to bring stuff in, bring stuff in. We had an officer, had eight kids. 
If you go to work at a prison with eight kids, you're there for one reason, and that's to have inmates buy stuff from you. You're there for the wrong reason. See how I turn my body again and I'm talking? I'm getting serious, I'm getting aggravated because this makes me mad, one of our guys, the meth and cell phones, tobacco marijuana, this guy brought in with his eight kids, makes me furious. He got a job so he can do this and make this money. Yeah, he got health benefits for all of his kids, but he used the prison as to build his secondary employment, which is working for the gangs. It should make you mad too, because all the meth that he brought in, we were fighting those inmates. I was fighting those inmates. Now, I enjoyed that fight part, but I hated the fact that I became friends with him. We all did on our shift, and then we walked him out in handcuffs. Now he's got a mandatory three years to serve in the state of Georgia. That makes me mad. Folks, you document it, you're saying no. You document it, you tell your supervisors. Now when they go from bring this in, bring this in, and they try all their slick and stuff, slick and slimy moves to get you to bring stuff in, they cross the line though when they try and extort from you. Extortion, blackmailing. You gotta do this or your family. Somebody tried to try to blackmail our, one of our lieutenants out and be a sir commander um, at that time. And that didn't go over very well. We had an open discussion. It was not physical. It was all verbal. All verbal. But in, in no uncertain terms and words do we let everybody know in that dorm the shakedown and the disaster that followed for the next couple hours. It happened to be his fault. Nobody ever threatened our families again at home like that ever again. We got our point across. Not one inmate was hurt. Not one inmate was hit, kicked, punched. Nobody sprayed, nobody tased, no use of force. We presented numbers of officers, the right officers, the ones that like to stand around the cert guys. I was on the cert team. We was all standing around going like this. The guns coming out, talking about things was about to happen. People got the hint, keep their mouth shut. However, legally, if they try and extort you, you definitely, you write them up, there's a charge for that, extorting an officer. You go to your supervisors immediately, they need to pass this right up all the way up to the warden or superintendent really fast. You can also get the local police involved. That's very important, kind of like a death threat. The police need to know. You get an incident report from your prison, from your facility, make copy of that, get permission from the warden, have it sent, you know, have it given to the officer, the police officer that shows up. They need to know this stuff. Then the warden's gonna make sure it goes to the investigator and they start investigating. And, and quite possibly they may move that inmate out really quick. We've had some things happen, been involved in use of force and I come back the next day, inmate I was in use of force with, you know, trying to stab me maybe, was moved before I came back to shift the next day. Things can get done very quickly. So, Devin, hope this answers your question. Thanks for asking for this. Um, once I get this posted, I'll shoot you a message. Document, fair, firm, and consistent. The no's, no and walk away, no and walk away. Have a buddy come with you. Both of you tell him no, don't ever ask us again, and walk away. Give him that look, give him that presence. You know, if you've got a six foot eight correction officer, somebody's played high, you know, a big lineman from college, high school football or something, take that guy with you, go up to that door and say, don't ever ask us again. It helps. It helps having big friends sometimes. This is one of those moments. Report it up to chain of command and don't forget to notify the police. See y'all soon.